There are four areas of the body's defense against disease. There are structural, cellular, chemical, and immunity. We'll look at each one. For structural, it's the first line of defense. A good example of the first line of defense for you would be your skin. If it remains intact, um, you're going to keep a, a lot of pathogens and toxins from being able to enter the body. Your mucus linings that are in your digestive and respiratory tract, um, they keep, and of course reproductive tract, they keep all sorts of pathogens from actually being able to enter your system. They will trap them, and then with the cilia, they usually move them on down the road where you can excrete them or get rid of them in some way, shape, or form. Of course, the cilia or the hairs, that's part of their job is to capture some of those foreign particles to prevent um, any pathogen from entering in. And we also have tears, which wash away the foreign matter that, that could possibly get in through your eyes. Another line of defense is cellular. Of course, it's the second line of defense. Uh, with cellular, we have white blood cells and of those white blood cells we have several different kinds that, that actually fight against bacteria, fungi, and viruses but for right now you just need to know that that's what white blood cells do. It's a very complex process all these white blood cells are. There are many different types of tissue we have that repel foreign uh, microorganisms. Here is a good example of one, the placenta. If we looked at the left here we see the uh, a stub of the umbilical cord coming off. But if you see, see on the uterine wall to the right hand side, you'll see that between the mother and the actual fetus itself, the arteries and veins do not actually embed and actually maintain direct contact with one another. There is a space in between that and that space in between can help us uh, or can help the baby from receiving certain things like viruses and colds from the mother while she is pregnant. <clears throat> then we have chemical. The uh, chemical, of course, is the third line of defense. With that, we're looking at basically like the lymphatic system. With the lymph nodes, they're going to produce antibodies, which are uh, able to destroy a specific type of pathogens. And your body has interferon, which interferon will inhibit viruses from reproducing. And once they enter the cell, they'll stop them from reproducing themselves. Uh, viruses actually use the cell itself to help reproduce itself, and the interferon will make it so the viruses don't recognize the cell that they like to usually get into the host, and therefore it'll be protected. And then we have immunity. There are several forms of immunity. Natural immunity is the immunity, of course, you're born with at birth. Um, it, on the cellular level, it involves the activation of natural killer cells. If we looked at a humoral natural immunity, we're looking at a form of immunity mediated by uh, circulating antibodies, which coat the antigens and target them for destruction. S the circulating antibodies are produced by plasma cells, and the interaction of the antibody with the antigen also activate the complement system. Basically, though, what you need to know is this is immunity you're born with from birth, and it has a genetic basis behind it. There are types of adaptive immunity. We have active and passive immunity. Active means you had to react with it. You had to get it yourself. Passive immunity is you've got it from another person or another agent, and that's how you received it. If we looked at these, there's acquired active immunity. The antibodies, of course, produce as a result of exposure to the pathogen. You got the vaccine or you previously confronted it. For example, let's say you've got chickenpox before. If you got a good case of the chickenpox, your body will have developed an immunity to the chickenpox and you should not break out of it again. And, of course, with vaccines, they're giving you weakened or dead pathogens within the vaccination itself and your body's fighting that off. You know, your body will learn to produce antigens to that before they actually multiply to the point where they affect you. Acquired passive immunity, this is where you receive another individual's antibodies, either mother to fetus or through some serum. Um, <clears throat> the mother's antibodies, of course, when you're a child, um, in childbirth, you will actually uh, have very strong antibodies for the first few days after childbirth. Then after a period of time, you'll create your own antibodies and they'll destroy the mother's antibodies and then the baby can get sick a lot easier. But as long as the mother continues to breastfeed, her antibodies are also in her breast milk. Um, through a serum, this is where someone else has developed antibodies against some disease, and we can actually create a, an inoculation to help you. The body has the four areas of defense against diseases. Over time, we've developed three defenses to assist it. Uh, first one would be vaccines. With vaccines, they contain an inactive or weakened form of the germ or germ component. 
We introduce it into the body and the dead and harmless germ causes the immune response without actually causing the person to get sick with the disease. The immune system then develops the antibodies that will effectively kill or neutralize the germ if it's exposed to it in the future. The antibodies circulate in the bloodstream. So vaccination protects the child against the infection without germ or without the child actually suffering through the disease. We also have antibiotics. Antibiotics are a type of medication that destroy or slow down the growth of bacteria. There are specific antibiotics that work better for different kinds of bacteria. And antitoxins. Antitoxins work against poisons which may be made by germs or come from snake bites. An antitoxin can be used to make only one kind of poison harmless. The antitoxin which helps against snake bites is of no use against the poisons of lockjaw. And the lockjaw antitoxin is of no use against poisons against diphtheria and so forth. 